How's it going? In this video, we're going to take this uh, component showcase page that we spent the past two videos constructing and give it some client side routing so that the content is uh, not all in one page, but is distributed across multiple pages. Um, and we're also going to make sure that each page is accessible um, by unique endpoints. We're also going to include a home page as a jumping off point and a not found page to handle, um, well, to handle routes that don't exist. So uh, we're gonna take this site, uh, which has dark mode, light mode functionality. Um, and if you haven't been um, involved in the past two tutorials, well, you'll know that we constructed all of these uh, components from scratch. Um, as well as the layouting and container and all that kind of stuff. Uh, so we're going to be taking this and we're going to be turning it into this, where you have your homepage as a jumping off point. So this is starting to look more and more like a component documentation site, which is the idea. Um, this project is creating a component library, which right now only has three components, um, and also the showcase for the component library. Um, we have our nav bar that has the... Um, dark mode, light mode toggling. We have these links that take us to um, my YouTube and my GitHub. Uh, and then we have these um, individual routes. So I can come over here to the button. You'll see that the URL changed. I can backspace, go to card. I can click on the brand and it'll take me back to home. And all of this is being managed by um, React Router DOM. Uh, the other thing that we're gonna be adding is a smooth auto scrolling. So you'll see that each one of these headings, when I click on it, it has this nice little calculated smooth scroll. Um, and the nice thing about that is, you'll see that when I click on these headings, it actually adds them to the URL. And the other nice thing about this is if I go ahead, I'm gonna copy this, and let's say I'm on this page, and um, or I'm on some other page, and then I want to navigate to this section directly, like let's say someone linked me um, a piece of documentation and I'm heading straight to this um, section of the documentation. I hit enter, as soon as I land, it'll kick off that auto scroll and take me to that position. So it gives it a little bit more of a, um, the uh, <laughs> game dev term is juice, um, but uh, just a nice little um, simpler, cleaner, um, user experience than being jarringly uh, snapped to the, the spot that the user wants to get to. Um, and let's see what else. Oh, we're also gonna update these block links so that we can, um, so that we can uh, leverage them with um, non HTML anchor tags. Uh, there's probably a better way for me to say that, but um, basically we have different linking um, packages for different um, use cases. So V, for example, uh, well, not V, but uh, since V is client-side rendered, we use React Router DOM uh, to link back and forth between pages. So instead of set passing in anchor tags only, or instead of only rendering um, these block links with anchor tags, we're gonna, prov we're gonna extend these components so that they can accept the React Router DOM link or the Next.js link. Um, and basically, what I, like any, any um, linking, uh, component that the end user wants to use. So the idea is to, to also um, update these components so that they're a little bit more useful. And um, you'll see that we're actually using those components here. And these are using those React Router DOM uh, links as opposed to the normal anchor tags. So um, if you haven't been following along with the past tutorials, uh, or you just wanna start from where I'm at, uh, then you can go ahead and grab the source code from the um, my UI components part three starter repo. Uh, this will be linked in the description. And uh, I do already have this cloned locally. So I am gonna switch over to VS Code and uh, get my server starting and go ahead and uh, get started with this thing. So once you get your uh, code pulled, um, you can go ahead and start your server uh, by opening up the terminal, control tilde. I already have my terminal up and running, but um, I'm gonna hit control C to end my uh, server. And uh, if you don't have your packages installed, you can just run npm i, hit enter, and I already have them installed, but this will install them if you don't have them. And then uh, to get your server started, run npm run dev. So there we go, localhost 5173. Um, cool, so once you have that done, hit control tilde once or twice to get that, um, that integrated terminal out of the way. 
and you're going to go ahead and head into the source folder and then into the app file, app.tsx. So this is the jumping off point for our application. Well, technically main.tsx is, but all this does is um, link to the app.tsx. So previously, we, um, we were rendering all the contents of the page from here. Now, yes, we are using components like um, the buttons container and the uh, card container and the input container. Um, those are from different files, but essentially everything kind of coalesces over here, which is fine, but you'll see this is like 335 uh, lines. We want to kind of like clean this up a little bit first. Um, and because we're actually going to also have each of these containers represent an individual page. So uh, to go ahead and get started with that, first thing we want to do is head over to our components. Um, Actually, you know what? No, let's let's be a little bit more organized. So instead of putting these in the components, even though they are gonna be components, um, I like to I like to put things that are um, explicitly or specifically routes. Um, meaning, if I come over here to this final version, um, there's the route for button. So it makes sense that I'm gonna put the button container, which is over here. Um, I'm gonna have this uh, come from this route. So that's kind of like the structure that we're gonna be following is for every route, we're gonna have one component. Um, so let's go ahead and do that. And certain people have different approaches to this because this is uh, React, you kind of have the freedom to do it however you like. Well, unless you're using Next.js, then you're kind of like um, forced to use their um, semantics, but uh, we'll cover that at a later date probably. This is using V, which is client-side rendered. And what client-side rendering means by the way is that um, when a user makes a request to the client-side rendered application, um, all of this code gets shipped in a bundle of JavaScript that gets like compressed down and sent as like a couple of files with uh, more or less a single HTML file, which is actually this one right here. Um, and all of the React code actually uh, gets rendered out of this one div, right? Now, when um, when you do your routing, the way the logic works is uh, because we don't have individual HTML files where every individual HTML file is its own route, so forth and so on. The way this works is we basically have to programmatically like figure out okay what the route is, what content is displayed for that route, et cetera, et cetera. So that, that's kind of why you have like a little bit more flexibility because it is a little bit crazy. But uh, once you get used to it, it's um, you'll you'll have a hard time uh, getting away from it. Maybe, who knows, maybe I'm just crazy. So in my source folder, I'm gonna add a new folder called routes, and this is where we're gonna put those route components. So in here, I'm going to create, um, we'll do three uh, files for now. So the first one is just gonna be button.tsx, all right. The next one is going to be card.tsx, and the next one is going to be input.tsx, okay? Now, in each one of these, I'm just gonna create a basic um, arrow function component. So I'm using the uh, ES7 plus uh, React, Redux, Redux, React Native snippets. Um, so you can grab those from your uh, VS Code extensions if you don't have them, just so that you can save yourself a few seconds. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a new uh, arrow function. And I, because I'm um, tacky, instead of calling it input route, because that looks ugly, I'm gonna call it input page, all right? And um, this is for the input component. So I don't know why I started with input. It is the last one, but it is what it is. So um, I'm gonna head back to app.tsx. I'm gonna hit control B to hide my sidebar, just because uh, I have to zoom in so that y'all can see this on mobile, hopefully, uh, if that's where you're watching it. So I don't want it in my face. So I'm gonna grab this last container, which is the input container. I'm gonna hit Control X, I'm just gonna cut it, and I'm gonna come to this uh, return statement, and I'm just gonna paste that there. Um, and yeah, that's, that's basically it. Well, we do need to resolve these errors, so um, I need to import these uh, the container input and section. So I am just gonna grab them from here. Because I'm lazy, I'm gonna actually grab this whole thing. <laughs> um, Paste those there, just get rid of the ones that I'm not using, which is this one, excuse me, please stop, thank you. Uh, it's this one, gonna control click this one, control click this one, control click this one, and hit control shift K, and that deletes all of them. 
And of course, because um, these were being imported from app.tsx and we are now in routes.tsx, we have to first go up a directory, then go into components. So I'm gonna add an extra dot and there we go. So that error is resolved. Gonna do the same thing for these. And there we go, no more errors. Save that. Um, and now we have our input page. So back in app.tsx, underneath where the last container was, I'm just gonna open a HTML tag, type input page, enter, close this tag, and I can get rid of this uh, import statement. Bye bye. And then we save, and you'll see that um, I'm on the wrong tab. <laughs> you'll see that my inputs are still here. Uh, so now let's do the same thing with the card. So I don't know why I'm going backwards. So I am just gonna like um, uh, speed through these. So by all means, like pause and make sure you like uh, copy over whatever you can if you um, get confused. And like I said before, we have a, um, a Git repository with all of the um, steps from every chapter to help you out. So um, feel free to grab that as a reference as you need it. So in this uh, card.tsx, type RAFC, enter. I'm gonna paste uh, the contents of that card container here. And I'm gonna go back to app.tsx. I'm gonna grab all that, even though I don't need all of it. Paste that, get rid of the ones I'm not using. So um, I'm not using button, I'm not using layout, and I'm not using input page. And control shift K, control shift K deletes a line, so that deleted all the lines that were selected. So now I just need to resolve these. So instead of one dot, it's two, 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 there we go. So like I said, again, this goes up one directory into source and then into components slash site slash section. Cool. So we save that and refreshed. Uh, the card is still there because we haven't saved app.tsx. So actually, if I save this, the card is going to disappear, but we need it back. So I'm going to come here. I'm going to type card. Paid. Oh, I'm a silly goose. It's just called card. So I need to change this to card page. There we go. So I'm gonna copy that. Head back to app.tsx. Paste that there. Erase and uh, add an E. I don't know why I said erase. Enter. That imports it. Close the tag. Save it. Card shows up again. Um, let's do, why am I clicking random things? Let's do the same thing with the button. So there we go, we grab that, RAFC. Um, gonna paste that here. Gonna change this to button page. And then in app.tsx, <coughs> excuse me, um, in app.tsx, oh, why did I right click? In app.tsx, I'm gonna copy these, paste them there. And then once again, get rid of things I'm not using, like these two, layout. Oh gosh, I just unselected. So control click, not click. Control click, control click, control click, control click. Control shift K. That deletes all those. Add the missing dot here, here, and here. My IntelliSense is really annoying. We hit save. And we have our, well, wait. Oh. <laughs> I didn't control X this, I controlled seed it. So that's why these buttons are still showing up. So if I remove that, they're gone, but we need them back. So we do button page, enter to import, slash to close that tag, save, button shows back up again. I get rid of these lines. So again, control click to, um, to add another cursor. Control shift K to delete one line at a time because I had a bunch of selected at once, deleted all of them at once. We save, and there we go. Now we have individual files with every single one of the components that are going to eventually become routes. For this chapter of the tutorial, um, all the code that I'm gonna write is going to actually get like blasted away. Um, so if you're interested in just um, jumping straight to the React router um, bit, then I would suggest jumping to the next chapter. But if you want to understand why we use, um, why we're even using a tool like React Router, um, then you might want to stick around for this chapter because I'm going to explain kind of how uh, routing works a little bit differently when it comes to um, uh, the way client-side rendered React, such as how in the in the past Create React App and now Vite um, deal with routing. 
So the, um, <clears throat> the difference between a React application that is client-side rendered and like uh, your old-fashioned um, static HTML sites, for example, is with your static HTML sites, you would have like a specific HTML page, like uh, something.html for a specific route, right? So let's say you were at like, in this case, you were at like the button route, for example, then you would be loading something like, you've probably seen this in the past, you'd be loading something like button.html, right? Um, later on, when we had, um, when we dealt with things on the server, uh, when you did a request, so anything that gets typed into this bar, into this address bar, when I hit enter, that's basically a get request, right? So um, when these get requests would be uh, sent to the server, the server would parse out the information from the URL, figure out what needed to get sent back, do a whole bunch of other stuff. If it was like an authenticated route, it would do a bunch of different things and then would send back a, um, if it was a static page, it would send back a static um, HTML, a static HTML content. If it was um, if it was not static, it would like build it and then send it back like in the case of PHP and so forth and so on. But uh, the way client-side rendered applications work, um, especially with Vite, is when you, uh, when you request the app in production, you're going to receive a bundle. That bundle is going to contain uh, more or less three things. It's going to contain the HTML, which is really just going to be this HTML over here. And it's going to contain a JavaScript file, which is going to, well, one or a couple of JavaScript files, depending on how much like React code you have. And what that, what that JavaScript is going to be is like a bunch of like minified and bundled um, JavaScript all shoved into one single JavaScript file and served to this div over here. And then probably CSS if you have CSS. So I'm gonna show you what that looks like. Um, so this is the production version of this app. Um, and let's just, so I open up the Dev Inspector by hitting Control Shift I. I'm just gonna refresh real quick. And I have my network tab open. And you'll see that when I refresh, so I'm gonna clear out what happens over here. And when I refresh, it fetched three things. It fetched a document, a script, and a style sheet. If I click on the document um, and I, oh gosh, let's try that again. I double clicked it. If I click on this and if I look at the response, you'll see, look at that. This HTML is essentially identical to the HTML that I was just looking at. If I go to the card page, huh, no new HTML was requested. No new JavaScript, no new CSS. I'm still working with the same files that I was working with a second ago. And the way um, this happens is instead of the um, files being served to specific paths or sub routes um, in the URL, you have um, the application itself is dynamically changing the content in the JavaScript to render specific views relative to the path. So in this case, because I because of how React Router works, I defined my uh, route as um, card, and when I navigate to card, it inspects this part of the URL, and it figures out okay, um, you're on the card sub route, so we're going to use um, whatever component you assign to that route, which in this case is the card page component. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it in a nutshell, I think. Um, I may have uh, like mixed up a few concepts here and there, so forgive me if it's not like a, it's not a scholarly um, explanation. It's just off the top of the dome, <laughs> so uh, mileage may vary there. But I would recommend that you read the React Router uh, documentation, uh, just the main concepts, because it does explain kind of like where this comes from. Or we could go through this quick and dirty little exercise so that I can show you how that works uh, in a very rudimentary and not at all, um, production safe way. So if we go back to our app.tsx, I'm going to create a, basically a fake version of React Router. It's, well, not fake. It's probably nothing like it, but it's more or less how it works. Uh, well, less, a lot less how it works, but, <laughs> but it's close enough. So, um, in our app, uh, component, let's, uh, go ahead and create a, uh, use state snippet. Um, all right, I said create use state snippet. I meant create a, st oh, whoa, hello there. Okay, I totally meant to import this and it doesn't want to import it. So let me just come up here and import. So we're going to want to create a state object to represent 
Oh, I hate doing this manually. From React. There we go. And while I'm here, I'll just do use effect because I'm going to need that in a second. So uh, in our use state, or sorry, in our um, in our app in our app component, Lord, I cannot speak today. In our app component, um, we're gonna to, to actually access the URL. Uh, we are going to um, well, we're gonna store it and we're gonna set it using use state. So we're gonna store it in a variable called current path. So this will store things like um, like uh, slash card or slash button or slash or slash input, so forth and so on. Uh, and these are all gonna be strings. So, and then in the setter, we're just gonna call it set current path, and we're gonna set the state to the current path. So if we load here, at just, with, this is basically the root, so this would just be slash, right? Um, so, but if we load, uh, if we load the site at, yikes, if we load the site at, um, if we load the site at say slash button, then it'll um, it'll recognize the current location as button. So we're gonna set the path to the window global object location path name. Okay, and this is just gonna grab. I'm actually gonna log this so that you see it. So current path. So if I hit Control Shift I, you'll and go to console, you'll see that the current path is slash right. And if I come over here, and I did button you'll see that the current path is slash button. Control shift I to close that, get rid of this console log. So let's go ahead and add a use effect, which will um, run on mount. So we're gonna get rid of this. So basically whenever um, whenever we first load um, the component, this will only run once. Um, and in here, we are going to uh, first create a function that we're gonna use in a second. And it's const handle pop state. Um, and we're going to set this to an arrow function, which will run set current path to window dot location dot path name. Okay. And the, the purpose behind this function is that whenever the, um, pop state, uh, event, yeah, it is an event event occurs it will set the current path to the new path name. And the pop state event is whenever you uh, navigate. So whenever you hit back, forward, navigate to a different thing, whatever, whatever gets stored in your history, um, pop state runs to basically update the history. Because the history, if you think about it, is just a collection of all of the activity that you have done in the browser. And in this case, it's specific to the window that you're in. So we declare this little function that's really just gonna um, set the state. And then um, we need to add this function to um, win down. <laughs> we need to add this function to our browser. So we're going to do window dot add event. I said browser. I meant window. Um, so we're going to add um, this function um, as event listener to the pop state event, and the function that's going to run is handle pop state. So. Whenever the pop state event runs uh, occurs, we're going to handle that pop state. Meaning, whenever back forward navigation happens, we're going to handle it. And what handle it means is we're going to set the current path to whatever the current path is. Okay, and then we'll just do a cleanup function, which will. Oh my gosh, anfn, not anfnf. Okay, anfnf, anfnf, Five Nights at Freddy's. We're going to do a remove event listener which uh, I'm just actually gonna copy pasta this down there, change that to remove. And yeah, so what this is gonna do is just to clean it up so that we don't have like an event listener getting added to the window every single time, like um, the component mounts. It's just gonna clean it up and remove this um, whenever this uh, function is done running. So I can actually, silly me, I forgot that this was here, so I'm just gonna erase that. I'm gonna hide my sidebar using Control B because it's in my face, and I think that's it for the use effect. Now, um, let's create a function called navigate. So we're gonna say const navigate, and this is gonna be an arrow function. So equals to a and a fun. It's gonna take in a parameter of path, which is gonna be a string. And what navigate's gonna do is whenever, um, whenever, um, whenever we call navigate, we're gonna update the history using the path that we pass in. So 
what that's going to look like is uh, we're going to access our window object, specifically the history property of the window object, and we're going to push the uh, no data is going in here because it's just a static thing, um, and then an empty string, and then we're going to pass in the path that we pass in here, and so this is going to um, this is going to append this action, this new path navigation to this history, but we also need to set our current state. So we're going to say set current path to the new path. Okay. So last thing we're going to do is we need to render the components. Um, so I'm actually going to comment this out real quick. And down here, we're going to say const render, whoa, render, not render, component. I'm going to set this to a arrow function, and inside of here, we're gonna use a switch statement to handle all of the different route options. So um, we're gonna say, or current uh, path option, the same thing, path, current route, potato, all the same thing. So um, the first case is actually gonna be a uh, uh, slash, and here we'll say return lord. Uh, well, we don't have a home page, so what this references is like the index or the home or the root. So we'll just pass in a div and say, welcome home, you big dummy. Me, I'm the big dummy, not you. Okay, so next one, I'm just going to copy pasta or alt shift down. So that copy pasta that, that, co that copy pastas that. I mean, what is grammar when you're using fake words, am I right? So uh, for the case of button, we're going to return the button page and same thing alt shift down twice same thing goes for card we're going to return the card page and same thing goes for input we will return the inputs page okay and uh, the default is not going to be a break because what what we're going to do here is we're going to handle routes that don't exist which um, we'll use a uh, fake 404. So we'll say return div no dice there matey error. Now you know what? I do want to spell it wrong. Error fo o fo dope. Save that. It's gonna scream. That's okay because we're returning nothing. So. Uh, there's nothing for it to return. So uh, let's see. Less, oh, <laughs> the speak of the devil. We need to return something. So last thing we're going to return is the, you know what? I'm just going to copy this. I am going to keep it the way it is because we're going to come back to that in a second. Um, uncomment this. I'm going to get rid of these three. And I'm going to pass in this function, which will run... Um, and basically the way this is going to work is instead of returning a component, we're returning a switch statement, which will return the component relative to the current path. So we save and then look at that. It, it was that button. So it shows us button. If I click home, it takes us to home. Uh, I don't have any links here. So let's go ahead and make a little uh, fake little home page. So we'll say RAFC to create a page. We'll say home page. And um, we'll make this homepage really simple. Uh, I do want to pass in some links over here so that I can access other stuff. So, uh, well, I actually need the links to have access to the navigate function. So I'm actually gonna make this take in children. So, and you'll see why in a second. So we'll open up these brackets, say children. We'll set this to type, or we'll set the types as children react dot react node. And I think that this needs to be a, whoops, an optional. There we go. And in here, um, we'll say container. We'll just import the container object or the container component, excuse me. Um, there we go. And inside this container, we will render the children. And I do need to pass in things like, uh, well, you know what? I'll just pass in the things that we're going to pass in here eventually. So we'll say the title is what that is. And 
you'd think I wrote this thing and I'd remember. No, it's not subtitle, it's description. There it is. Okay. And the description is this. Mahmood is me, by the way. In case you were wondering. Cool. All right. So now we save. Uh, that didn't do anything because I'm not actually using the home page anywhere. So let's go ahead and return that here. So we'll say home page. Close that. And inside the home page, we're going to pass in these links. So let's just create a div for cleanliness purposes. Say div dot, so we get the class, class names. I, I don't know what the heck I just said. I just started stuttering with the letter F. Flex, flex call. Uh, we'll do text black on white. And since we have dark mode, we'll do dark text white. Save that. Oh man, that looks so nice. It literally looks identical. Dope. It's almost like I've done this before. Now in here, we're gonna actually add the links that will navigate us to other things. So because we're not using React Router, we're just gonna use normal um, A tags. So um, I'm literally just gonna, uh, we don't need the href because we're not navigating to a different HTML page or we're not like, um, we're not navigating to um, a different route rather you can you actually can do this with a button instead of an a, a tag, but I just decided to do an a tag. So um, I don't know why I'm typing on children. I meant to write on click. So whenever this gets clicked, will I ever learn how to type? Okay. Whenever this clicks, we will run navigate and we'll pass in. Uh, in this case, this is a link to button. So we'll pass in slash button. And I don't actually need this curly brace outside here. Save that. Click on button. Took us to button. Click back home. Took us home. So we'll just, for completion's sake, do this twice. Card. Input. Card. Input. Save. Um... So this is a whole lot of nonsense, right? But it th this is this is essentially how browser routing works is uh, or how um uh the like um dom based javascript routing works, right? It's like we don't actually have um like different files to route to. We don't have a server that's serving us different files. Rather, we're just telling the page, which is all javascript and a single html file, "Hey, I am at slash card so show me the content that should appear at slash card, which I've indicated using this switch statement. So uh, in the home page, you can see the home page when I'm at the slash, which is just empty. Um, when I'm at button, I can see button. When I'm at card, I can see card. When I'm at input, I can see input. And it just swaps out the components. That's it. We're not rendering new pages, or sorry, we're not loading new pages from any um, backend or like any file system or anything. We're just swapping out what the user sees. And that's more or less in a nutshell how React Router um, works. So now we can actually move on to the part where we do the thing that is going to show up in the uh, final code base. So uh, now that that exercise is over, we're going to go ahead and, um, well, reset this so that we can start using React Router. So I am going to have a hard time using my mouse, bro. Okay. I, I don't know how that just happened. Um, I have a weird thing with my scroll, so I'm gonna use my mouse for this one. So we click and grab all those. Backspace, so we're back to where we were. I am gonna keep the home page though, so don't delete this, but now we're kind of back to where we were before we started that little exercise. And um, what I'm gonna do, well, I do first need to install React Router now that I think about it. So I hit Control tilde to open up my integrated terminal. I'm going to split it because I don't want to end my, um, end my current session. I'm going to run npm i react router dom. Hit enter. Give it a second. One millisecond, two millisecond. I meant one Mississippi. I don't know why I said millisecond. Yo, come on. Okay, there we go. That took way too long. Okay, so I'm going to, yeah, I don't need to install anything else, I think, so we're good. I'm going to kill that one and control tilde to hide that back. Okay, so now that we have React Router installed, I'm going to go ahead and start importing some things. 
So we're going to import um, the routes. Uh, we're going to import route. <laughs> we're going to import the outlet. We're going to import browser router. And we're going to import link. And these are all going to be, why did I do equals from react route? router dom do you exist okay we're good okay so these are the things that we're going to use in this component um so instead of hmm, so there's a little thing that we have to change we need to rename app well mm, okay i'm gonna start doing some crazy stuff and uh don't mind me so I'm gonna come. I'm gonna copy this and paste it there. It'll make a lot more sense in a second. Mm -hmm. And um, this is still we're we're still only having one app. So I'm just gonna remove the default. I'm gonna call this app routes. We need to um, in order to actually use the browser router, which is more or less exactly what y'all just experienced um, a second ago, where I had everything wrapped in a um, single wrapper component that managed all the um, navigation and all that kind of stuff. In order to do that, we have to use this browser router object. So I'm gonna replace the layout um, in the default with the browser router. And now I have access to the browser router. I'm not gonna explain the browser router compared to all the other um, routers that exist, but there are a few. I have only used the browser router and the hash router myself. Yo, they don't even link hash route. Oh, wait, it's right there, okay. So I have used browser router and I've used hash router. I haven't used any of the other ones, so I can't speak to the other ones. But um, yeah, the one that we care about and the one that's like most used as far as I can tell is the browser router. Um, so we're gonna do this one. And this one, like I said, it lets you navigate within the browser. So it lets you access the browser API and do a bunch of other things. So we're gonna need to wrap our application in this. We can't wrap the routes directly, we have to wrap another component that will then use the routes. Um, I, to be honest, I'm sure there's a reason for it. I just, uh, as soon as I see the error, I get annoyed and I just ignore it and move on. So uh, in this case, we are going to be, uh, most people t typically do this where they'll, um, they'll wrap their app in the main file, but it really doesn't matter. At the end of the day, these are just functions with names. Um, so it doesn't matter one way or the other how you do it. This is just the way that I prefer to do it. That way everything's in one place and I don't have to mess with my main.tsx file. So um, <clears throat> now that we, so we renamed app to app routes and then we created this app, which will be our new export default and um, our default export. Jeez, I'm saying everything backwards. And this one just uh, provides the browser router and wraps our um, app routes function. And then inside of this function, we're gonna keep the layout, kinda. I'm gonna add another return above this. Uh, it doesn't mean we're gonna have two returns, it's just because I find it to be easier to cut and paste than to rewrite things. So uh, the app routes is going to expose the routes object. Um, and the routes is going to wrap a route. So you can do this in a few different ways. You can either have your routes wrap a bunch of individual routes, which is fine. But in our case, I want to future-proof this to provide sub-routing. So let me explain how that works. So these route components essentially say, um, you can pass in the path and the element, and it'll basically say, at this path, return this element. So what that looks like is, let's say we have the, um, the route of path um, slash, which is just the root the index, and this is going to take an element, which is the React component that should show up at this route. And um, I'm gonna do this the old fashioned way first, or not the old fashioned, but the, the, the normal way, and then I'll show you how we're gonna do it. So here we'll pass in the home page that we created earlier. Um, and I need to close this. There we go, cool. So now we have our routes. So I'm just gonna comment this, because if I save it right now, it's gonna delete it. Um, save that and <laughs> yeah, so we don't have our layout. So none of the fun stuff that we have in our layout component, um, get, get persisted, 
but yeah, so this is um, this is showing up at the slash nothing route. And then if we go to button, it's still, it's not gonna show us anything, excuse me, because, uh, well, we don't have a button route defined. So we're gonna go ahead and do that here and down there. And um, I'm gonna control double click all these, control double, or just double click that, control D twice. Now I have these three selected, control V to paste. And for these, I'm gonna say button, card inputs. And the reason I'm saying button with a really hard T is because uh, uh, sometimes when I, when I like, um, when I speak, it sounds like I'm saying button <laughs> with a D. So yeah, so there you go. There's uh, the button or button. There's the card with a single and there's the input. And I lost dark mode because I don't have my layout. So to remedy that, I am uh, gonna actually have to wrap every single one of these in a layout so we're on inputs i'll show you what that looks like so we'll do not that it needs to be wrapped in the layout and we'll do the same thing here so we'll say dude what i i didn't even type that i don't know how that just happened so there's our layout and uh you'll see now everything in the layout shows up including the dark mode but um the issue here is let's say that eventually i want to have like um Let's say eventually I want to have a like slash, um, I don't know, uh, cookbook. I don't know why I would have a cookbook here, but let's say I would want to have a cookbook route. And then I would want to have a cookbook potato recipes, right? Um, this is going to get really out of hand. And the issue that I foresee here is that if you do it this way, you end up having to like hard code all of these routes and you end up just getting this like repeated nonsense where you have like the same parent route and this could like be like nested ad infinitum. So because we wanna have nested routes, what we're gonna do instead is we're gonna leverage the, um, the outlet and um, it, I actually don't know what they call it. It's, I think it's a, um, it's the nested routes design pattern uh, is what, I, or uh, programming pattern is what I would say. But essentially what that means is instead of having all these routes, we're gonna have one route for every parent. And then every time you nest, you're gonna nest one route and then its routes will be um, rendered within it. And I'm gonna stop talking now and actually show you what that looks like. So um, inside of this route, we are going to pass in, um, wait, why did I do that? I meant to do this. So inside of this route, rather than pass in the, the home page, what we're gonna do is we're gonna pass in um, the outlet, like so. Oh my gosh. Okay, there we go. So we pass in an outlet. And what the outlet does is it basically, um, it, it's like a placeholder for rendering child routes. So what this is saying is like, this will be passed on to whatever the children of this route is, which actually implies that I need to make this a um, normal HTML tag. So not a self closing HTML tag like so. And then I'll take the closing tag and wrap the other routes inside of it. I'm gonna save just so the formatting shows. So there you go. So you see this, this route has these routes nested within it. I'm not done yet. So, um, Wait, am I done? No, no, I'm not done. What am I doing? Okay, so I actually, um, I need to get rid of this layout, get rid of this layout. Uh, control, control, click, control, shift, K. And by the way, sorry if you hear that rain outside. It is stormy over here. Um, so now what I wanna do is, because all of, the, um, all of the components are sharing the same layout, I can actually wrap the outlet in the layout. So we're gonna do that. So layout, close. Place the outlet there, and there you go. Now all of our pages have the outlet. But you could be asking, wait, where's the home page? To which I will say, good question. Let's add it. Um, now the home page is going to work a little bit differently because we're already reserving this path for the parent route. So what we'll do is instead of defining this again, we'll just say index equals true. And because we did this, if I save, actually, you'll see the button page, but I need to pass in the home page, save. 
And there you go. So this is what the nested routes look like. So um, I don't have to keep like define, oh, I can actually, I think it's like, a, if I do a relative, I forgot, I forgot what it was, but there's like a way to basically get rid of this slash. Right now these are exact routes. So I still have to do the slash button for it to work. But um, there is a way to have um, relative paths where it'll basically know, okay, this is just an um, addition to whatever my parents' path is, um, which I didn't do. And I just realized I contradicted myself from what I said earlier. So let's uh, ignore that. Um, but yeah, so this is, the, um, this is what the router looks like. So you'll notice it looks a lot cleaner than our uh, previous implementation, which makes me um, incredibly happy. And I can now get rid of this commented out return statement. And I'm actually, while we're here, I'm gonna cut this home page. I'm gonna go to my routes folder, create a new file, call it home.tsx, paste that there. I do need to import container, which I'm just gonna cut from app.tsx. Save that. It's gonna scream because there's a syntax error. Uh, this needs to be dot dot, there we go. Go back to app.tsx, and now we can import our home page. Sweet. And um, there is one thing I do want to do. So, with um, with our home page, uh, our navbar is using an anchor tag. So I do want to go ahead and change that to use the um, the link object, which I realized I imported here, but I needed it somewhere else. So I'm gonna get rid of that. Save that. I'm gonna go back to uh, components, site, navbar, and where we have this anchor tag, since we're using React Router now, we don't need to use an anchor tag. Um, the anchor tag doesn't provide, this uses a um, an href, which will like actually navigate, so you'll see the refresh hit, so this actually renders the site, or sorry, it requests the site and loads everything from scratch when I click it, and I don't wanna do that. I wanna use the browser router, so to do that, I'll import the link, so I type link. Does not show up in my recommended things, which is a little annoying. Um, so I guess I'll have to go up here, say import link from React Router DOM. And uh, the link doesn't take in an href, it takes in a parameter called two. And that's all I need to change here. When I save, now when I click the nav bar, it doesn't have to re, and you see the refresh doesn't run because it doesn't actually need to uh, do another request for the page. And um, did I break something? Uh-oh. No, there's no errors. To, oh wait, hold up, ooh, bug time. This is my favorite time of the day. Okay, so our route has a path of slash which has an element that has a layout, an outlet, um, index true, element homepage. Just like, oh, I am a silly goose. This is actually, turns out I contradicted myself yet again. Would you look at that? I was born with no brain cells. There we go. So yeah, whoops. <laughs> so I completely, um, flopped there mentally. Uh, but yeah, you don't need to put the, uh, the parent, slash in here you can just type in the um the amendment to the path so sorry if i uh confused y'all extra there for a second but there we go our react router is now working everything looks is looking nice and dandy and uh we can move on to some of the other uh, nifty bits so um before i move on completely to the next bit i do need to um make a quick update to the home page um so <laughs> I didn't update this since um, since we removed that um, uh, terrible looking fake re React router. So I just need to get rid of the children because we're not actually passing anything um, into the home page. And instead, what I want to do is um, I am going to do a thing which I am forgetting what it is. So I think it was uh, Flexbox with. Um, Let's call text black, dark, text white. So this is just adding back those links that we had earlier because um, we actually need them. <laughs> so um, here we'll say link, 
Come on. Okay. I do not feel like typing this again, so I'm just going to copy that from navbar. Paste it there. And um, we are going to... We need to have a way to navigate from home to the other um, components, right? So we'll say link to uh, button. And this is just going to take... We don't actually need the button component, by the way. Because everything is inside the browser router, it will, um, it will know what the component is because we pass it in uh, in in uh, via the routes um, in the app.tsx. So all we have to do is say link to the button route. It'll route it to button. Um, and we'll just have the text for button show up here. This is just a very rudimentary thing. We're going to change this later, but we'll say card, card, and input. Um, input. There we go. We save. And now we can... Now we have some real routing, bro. Look at that. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Nice. Okay, so <laughs> moving on. I don't know what those, those sounds that I just made were. I'm tired. Leave me alone. Uh, so let's um, let's now. Um, well, you know what? Since we're on a roll, let's go ahead and add another route. We'll do not. I said note not found because we didn't do this, and this is going to handle um, all of the stray routes. So let's say I do. Um, Instead of B, we'll say um, bare necessities, the simple bare necessities, and it doesn't know where to go. So let's go ahead and say RAFC, and um, we'll call this not found paid page with a G, and um, oh, you know what? I'll just freestyle some styles. So uh, we'll just do dot, yeah, dot P. P, not that px4 so we'll give this a padding we want the padding of four uh vertical padding not of seven of what bro am i good why am i acting like this i i don't know why i just did that okay so a vertical padding of 10 we'll give it text center we'll give it um <clears throat> apx of uh six when it reaches the small screen breakpoint and when it reaches the large screen breakpoint we'll do padding of six uh, sorry, padding of eight in the X direction. Cool. Um, and then, you know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to copy pasta this and you can pause and copy this over because it's really not um, anything crazy. So let me do that real quick. Okay. There we go. Save that. And of course, it doesn't do anything because we need to point to the not found page. So go ahead and pause, copy this over. Um, oh, in case you're wondering where I got this, it's uh, you can actually find that link in the input uh, component. <laughs> no, you can find it in the input route. There it is. So it's from the Emojipedia um, site, pensive face. So that's where I got that emoji. You can do whatever you want if you don't want to use an emoji. Um, so back in app.tsx, we're going to add one more route. So alt shift down to duplicate this line. And this time what we're going to do is we're going to, um, set the path to star, which basically means all. And because this is the last child, this will run. So what happens is when, um, when the, when the, when the, <sighs> come on, come on, you got it, Biden. When you navigate this, um, <laughs> Lord, I can't think of the way to explain this. So when you navigate to any path, the, uh, for lack of a better word, the router will essentially look through each one of these items one by one and determine, okay, is it input? No. Is it button? No. Is it card? No. Is it input? No. And it'll reach the um, last one last. So in this case, if I put star, this basically means all, or in other words, all else. So, uh, what I'm saying here is you're going to first check all these. If you don't find all these, then for everything else, use not found page. And there you go. We save. There's our not found page. Uh, to prove that I have somewhat of an idea of what I'm talking about, if I save and put that there, go to home, go to... Huh. I could have swore this worked um, chronologically, but I guess I was wrong. Um, 
well, that's awkward. So we'll just put that back there and uh, pretend that that didn't happen. <laughs> okay, so now that we got our not found page, we can um, we actually uh, need to go back to our home page and fix this because uh, these look uh, terrible. So I'm gonna go back to home and um, instead of these links, let me first comment these. I'm not gonna remove them. I'm just gonna comment them because uh, we're gonna need these later. Um, but in here, I want them to look like these cards. And since we have a component for that, I'm gonna go ahead and um, import those cards. So it's block link, link, not long link card. Uh, this is gonna take in a URL of slash button and the text is gonna be button. Gonna close that. And then inside of it, we are gonna, um, we're gonna need an emoji. And where should I get that emoji? I believe that's a Radix UI emoji. Yep. Import R X button from, um, we already have this imported, uh, installed, excuse me. So this is gonna be from the React icons slash Radix package. And I'm gonna copy that, paste that there, and um, just gonna give it a class name with two S's, class name of height 10, width 10, close, save, and there we go. There's our button. And would you look at that? We have a bug. It's not a bug, it's a feature. It's uh, by design and it's because we originally designed the buttons like so. So, uh, well, not the, what am I saying, buttons. We originally designed the cards so that when you click on them, they take you to a new tab because these were supposed to be links to things outside the site. But this means that we have to actually change up how this card works um, within our site. So to do that, we are gonna have to head over to our card component and we're gonna have to mangle some things around. Um, so go ahead and scroll down to your, um, oh, I realize I'm scrolling on the wrong screen. There we go. So scroll down to the block link card. And over here, we're gonna, um, we're gonna need to take in some new parameters. So the first parameter um, is, we're gonna call it custom link component. And uh, this might be a bad practice to capitalize a property like this, but the reason I'm doing this is because this is supposed to take in like a React router link, for example, that we can then render down here. Because those are capital cased and all components are usually capital cased when they're imported, I just figured um, I'm gonna stick to the customary um, semantics. I don't know what I'm saying. I didn't even spell anything in here right. Component, custom link component, cool. So it's gonna take a custom link component and because the link component has its own props and there could be different link, uh, linking components, we don't want to force everybody to use an href and I also don't wanna hard code it in the component itself. I don't wanna have a huge switch statement saying if it's React Router, do this, if it's this, do this. I'd rather just make it as open as possible. So to do that, we're gonna say custom link props and this is going to be an empty object um, initially uh, and yeah, I think that's it for this one. Um, under here, let's go ahead and define the types. So the custom link component is gonna be optional because we might not have a custom link component. And this is gonna be a React of, uh, React, a component type of any because it's going to be a React component, component type of any because it can be any React component. Um, then we're gonna say custom link props is also gonna be optional and it's gonna be any. Now, before anyone starts screaming at me that I don't know anything about TypeScript and that I'm doing this wrong, I will admit my TypeScript skills, TypeScript skills are growing and this could be an atrocious way to do this. But hey, leave your suggestions in the comments and I will get to them because I am more than happy to learn a new thing. This is just the way that I figured out how to do it. So, and it's it works for what we wanna do. So, you know, don't complain too hard. So um, now, what do we wanna do? Well, we want to actually 
at a ternary operator here to determine whether or not we want to render a um, normal anchor link, which is the ones that we have here, or whether we want to return whatever link component was passed into here. So to do that, I'm going to open up a bracket to pass in an expression here. And we're gonna say if custom link component is not um, undefined or null, so AKA if it's defined or if it's true, but since it's defined as a React component, it means is it defined, we're gonna return the custom link component. And in the custom link component, we're gonna pass in the, uh, the link classes over here. So we're gonna say class name equals uh, link classes. Now this could be a pitfall. Uh, there could, there's a pitfall over here that I'm not aware of that where like you could have certain links that already have different classes or don't can't be styled the same way. But we'll, we will burn that bridge when we get to it. And then we're gonna pass in, we're gonna use a spread operator to pass in the um, custom link props, uh, whichever ones they may be. So anything in the object custom link props will get um, spread out into this component. Um, so we'll close that. And then here we'll say link content. So the children or anything that we pass it. So basically it's gonna look the exact same way as this, but we're using the custom link instead of the A tag. So this is if we have the custom link component defined. If we don't have it defined, then I'm gonna cut this. I'm gonna go here, not a squirrely break, not a, not a squirt. Yes, that one. Paste that there and save. And I believe I'm missing one thing. We have class name, we have the href, we have target blank. And I think we actually have to, um, yeah, we might wanna actually pass in those custom props over here. So we'll say, oh, that was in the string, I meant to do it here. So we'll say uh, open brackets, dot, dot, dot. And we will pass in custom link. Yo, what the heck? I did not mean to add that there, sorry. Custom link props, link with a lowercase i, as react anchor HTTP attributes, HTML anchor element. This is just the uh, anchor link type. Um, yeah, so this lets us pass in those props as anchor link props. Um, so yeah, that's basically it. Um, so this basically lets us pass in the props to the anchor link if um, the link component is not defined. And um, I believe that's it for this one. So we'll go ahead and save. And uh, I do wanna fix up the styling because you might've noticed that uh, in the homepage, these buttons, um, they don't have the same, whoops. They don't have the same like kind of styling um, in terms of like their width. Like you see, they're like a little bit bigger and that's because I added a custom, um, a custom width prop to the card container because I wanted to, I realized that the cards are always stuck at like this max like width of small and we might want these cards to be a little bit bigger at times, right? So we do wanna create a, um, a or, uh, or we do wanna amend the card container so that we can have those variable links in there. Um, and I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to do that. So um, if we head up to the card container, um, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna add, I said add, I'm at and. I'm going to extend the card container props to also include a curly curly brace um, to add more props. And in here, we're gonna add the prop width limit, width with a D, W-I-D-T-H, width limit. Um, and this is just gonna be a, uh, yeah, this is gonna be a, hmm, do I wanna make it a string? No, no, we'll make it an enum. So it's gonna be an enum, so this is gonna be either none. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna let it basically um, determine whether we wanna use a max width of small or whether we wanna have no max width, have it fill up the, like just use W full, or whether we wanna use any of the other breakpoints. So the user would pass in none or yo, stop, none. Um, and the other ones I think are X small. I'm just gonna copy this a few times. Okay, so it's either X small, small, medium, or large. 
and I think more than large is like you should not have a, it should just be none at that point. Um, now we need to also define some of the, the the width classes because Tailwind doesn't like to construct widths dynamically. You have to actually define them statically. Well, you don't have to, but it it won't work as well. So we'll say const card widths, and these classes are going to be like so. So I'm just gonna um hmm yeah I'm gonna like grab all of these like that copy those down here I'm gonna paste them and just click these a few times hit colon uh, quotes max w that none does not have a max width actually but I was too lazy to do this so there we go and now we just need to um, to add commas like that. And there we go. We have our card widths defined. And now we need to actually use them. So in our card container, um, underneath our merged class, mm, yeah, underneath our merged classes, we're gonna say const width class. And we're gonna use tailwind merge again, just for, um, you know, me not losing my mind. Uh, and we're gonna say width full because this handles like um, conflicts and that kind of stuff. So I'd rather, I trust this more than I trust my own um, code. <laughs> uh, and we'll say card width. So it's gonna grab the card width that matches the width limit that's passed in, uh, which we did not define. Um, so underneath children, we'll say width limit. And um, we don't wanna require the um, the end user or the, the consumer to always have to define this, so we'll default it to x small, comma, which is what it was before. Uh, so that means we can actually get rid of the width class because now, or we can get rid of like the, uh, the class name here because now we have that handled in this typoed, there we go, um, variable. And we'll just open up a bracket there, paste that there, and we can save that. Um, though I do need to make a quick update, um, the content card, I want to just make sure that, um, because users are like, because we define the content card as, as a, like a standalone thing that consumes the card container, we need to pass this width limit along from the card, from all the cards to the, the, their respective card container wrapper. So we'll say width limit, um, and this is whatever the user defines it as. So we'll say with limits, we'll make this optional in the um, in the content card. Um, so this is gonna be a card container. So this is accessing the card container um, uh, component. Uh, it's accessing its prop of width limit. So instead of me having to go back and redefine width limit a ton of times, it's just going to grab the card containers. Um, why Why am I tripping? Card container prop. It's just gonna reference the prop directly at the property of width limit. So we can save that. That's screaming because we're not using it. So over here, we'll say width limit equals to whatever gets passed in. Save that. Um, and then I'm going to copy these two like that, head back down, um, to the block link card because, uh, the block link card is also, um, using the card container as a wrapper. And then over here, we'll just hit enter. So I did control click again. Um, and now we just need to pass in that width limit here. So width limit is equal to not a quote it's equal to the width limit that gets passed in which by default is just x small so we save that and now if i go back to home um it's still x small because i didn't change that <laughs> so let's go back uh let's go back here um and let's go ahead and add the um well, we need to add a few things actually. So this is the homepage. So back in home, we can go ahead and say uh, in the block link card, we can add the width limit 
uh, of none. And look at that, it filled it up. Uh, but we also need to change up some of the props that we're passing in. We don't need the URL anymore because we're not using the anchor tag. Instead, we're gonna say custom link component is the link um, component from React Router DOM. And now if I save that, it's not gonna work because I am missing the props. I need to say custom link props equals uh, an object. So make sure to open up a second double bracket, uh, a, a second curly bracket in there, excuse me. And this one, because this is the link component, it requires two, uh, not button, not card, but uh, oh my God, button. Um, this needs to be a colon, not a equals. We save. And now we have React routing using the block link card. So the block link card has been successfully made to be more extensible. Um, so we can use this in Next.js, for example, using the Next.js link uh, component. We can use it using React router, or we can just use it with normal anchor tags, which is the default. So now that we have the button, let's go ahead and add the other two. So um, I think it's card, card, input, input, save. That looks terrible. Um, and that's because I need to change this class. So we'll say, we'll give this a margin top of eight. Save, did nothing. We'll give it a grid with a gap of four. It still did nothing. Uh, let's do small grid calls two, small gap six. And of course it did nothing because I spelled it GERD. Literally did that twice. There we go. Isn't that nifty? Isn't that nice? And there you go. Uh, well, <laughs> one last thing. So I need to change these icons because uh, they're not all buttons. So this one is RX ID card. Uh, I just imported it, by the way. But if you didn't catch that, go ahead and import it. And the other one is um, RX input, enter, save, and there we go. So yeah, there we go. You've you've now. Yeah, look at you go. You've now updated your block link card to be super dynamic and you're gonna get that job, King. Keep trying. So for the last part of this tutorial, we're gonna go ahead and add the um, UX funzy over here where uh, this is my final build, but um, I wanna have this like nice little animation, um, have these headings act as uh, anchor links and add that little scroll functionality um, where when you navigate to it, it does this nice little like auto scroll bit. So um, to do that, we need to do a little bit of refactoring in our um, section component. So head over, I don't know why I had source control open, but head over to um, your uh, source components site section.tsx. And uh, what we're gonna do first, we're gonna refactor this little bit into its own separate component called title. Uh, title is going to take in two parameters, <laughs> not IT. It's going to take an ID um, of ID, and it's going to be title of title. And the reason it's taking an ID is because of this thing right here. Now, we could technically get away with um, just passing in the title as is, which I will actually do first, just, for, just to get rid of that error, because we're going to have to go into every section and create an, a specific ID for them. But um, basically this is just gonna give us like something unique to navigate to because we're gonna be using um, the document.get element by ID to actually like find the first instance of this. And because it's the first instance, we want it to be unique, but we'll get to that later. So this is what um, the tag is gonna look like, but we don't have the component yet. So let's go ahead and define that. So we'll say um, refc, Gonna get rid of this uh, import statement and we're gonna rename it to title. It's gonna take in um, two parameters. So I'm gonna open a bracket. It's gonna be ID and title, and they're gonna be of type. ID uh, is gonna be string, title is also gonna be string, and we're gonna return whatever I had copied earlier, which is that H2. Um, and I'm gonna also have an ID over here. Uh, there we go. 
I'm going to save that. And um, you'll see here that nothing changed. Looks the same. So now let's actually start adding in some of the um, things that make it pop first. So um, because we want these things to be links, we're actually going to need that link uh, component from React Router. So I'm going to go ahead and import that. Um, and because I'm lazy, I'm just going to, you know, grab this whole thing from app.tsx, paste it there. Conveniently, none of these are link. Um, so there we go. Now we have it. Uh, we are also going to need the um, use location hook. Uh, so I'll just go ahead and type that in for now. I'm going to grab that link and paste it there. And now um, this link should actually take in the title. And now we want to pass in these classes to the link instead of the H2. And for the H2, I'm just going to have one class. It's going to be a um, not a margin top, but a scroll margin top of 24. So when you scroll, when it automatically scrolls to this, it'll add an extra like 24 margin like this. So instead of it like just shoving the the heading like I don't know why it's not scrolling, but instead of it like shoving the heading like all the way over here, it gives it like a little bit of spacing. So it'll look something like uh, well. That one doesn't scroll that far, but it'll look something like this, where it scrolls down to here instead of like over like where the logo is, for example. So that's what the scroll margin top does. Um, why are you screaming? Oh, because there's no two. <laughs> so let's go ahead and add that. So this is going to be two. And because this is to an ID, we need to um, use a hash. Uh, and then we need to use a string interpolation to, or string templating to do a whole lot of nothing. There we go. To um, pass in the ID variable. Cool. Um, yeah, I think I'm missing something though. Oh yeah, I am missing um, that animation and that link over here. So uh, to save you all the boredom, I'm just gonna copy and paste that part. So go ahead and pause your screen, copy this over and once you get that copied, we do need to import this link. So let's see if I can do it off the dome right the first time. So it's import rx link to from React icons rx. Cool. Um, rx is uh, read, um, Radix icons. Um, Y'all should go to this site if you ever are looking for icons. They have phenomenal resources. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and save that. And back in our build... Um, nothing happened. Nothing happened because I didn't actually pass in two classes that I need, which are group and relative. And now, there we go. So now we have that nice little, like, hover over effect. Cool. So let's go ahead and, um, yeah, I, I think that's basically it. Except we are missing the functionality, which is why we got the use location in here. Let's go ahead and add that in. So, um... To use that hook, we'll say const location equals use location. And what use location does is returns the current location object which represents the current URL in web browsers. Now, if you're using this, it means that you're doing some of your own routing in your app and we'd like to know what your use case is. We may be able to provide something higher level to better use. <laughs> That's hilarious, dude. I did not know they had that in there. That's cool. Um, <laughs> they're trying to push you to their docs. I mean, their docs are good, so... But uh, this is what we need. Um, this is what we want, and it is what we need. Um, and of course, like this isn't like for anything like production crazy. It's not anything for anything like breaking. This is just for funsies and good UX or nifty UX. Um, you know, something to show off on your resume. Nothing crazy. So um, now we want to uh, add a use effect. Uh, and this use effect is going to run whenever the ID changes. So whenever this value changes or whenever the location hash changes. So, and I'm gonna explain what that is in a second. Um, so we pass in our um, anonymous function and our dependencies array, and we said that was the ID and the location dot hash. And the location hash is literally just a URL fragment identifier that starts with the hash. So this is basically like whatever's over here but starting from the hash. So in this case, it would be secondary. Um, so now that we have those things, 
I need to figure out what we're doing with them. <laughs> uh, so we're actually going to be doing a, two, uh, a few things. First thing I want to do is I want to define this function that's going to be used for scrolling gill. And I'm going to define it in two places. And I'm going to explain why I'm going to define it in two places. And it's really annoying, but um, it's not anything that I've had time to figure out why. And to be honest, I don't care. So this function is going to be the one that is responsible for scrolling us to the, uh, to the element that has the anchor link or the heading with the ID um, that we're passing into the component. So this function is going to have a, um, a anchor, which is the um, element that matches that ID. Um, and if that anchor exists, then we want to scroll to that anchor. So we'll say anchor dot scroll into view. Okay. And this is going to have a scroll behavior of smooth. And we are going to set its block to start. Cool. Now, um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to actually copy this and in the uh, function block, I'm going to say that if the location dot hash is not undefined, which means if it exists, then I'm going to do another if statement. Then I'm going to say if location, that's not how you spell location, location dot hash is the same as the interpolated string value of hash with the ID, I will learn how to spell one of these days. Um, so if these are equal, then we're going to scroll into the element. So what this means is if the URL, if the URL, oh my gosh, if the URL hash matches the headings ID, then it'll scroll to it. Um, otherwise, else, window dot scroll to. So access the window object, which has a function called scroll to and call it. And we're going to scroll to top of zero with a behavior of smooth. And the reason we're doing this here is we're saying if there is no URL hash, so if none has been passed in, or if it doesn't exist, then scroll to the top of the page. Cool? Cool. So um, now we do want to clean this up uh, by returning an anonymous function where if um, uh, when the component unmounts, so when the component's not here, because if you navigate back and forth, um, it will actually preserve like the scroll the scroll location, and we don't want that. We want it to scroll to the top anytime that you navigate. So to do that, when it unmounts, or when the component unmounts, excuse me, we'll say window dot scroll to top zero behavior instant because I don't want it to smooth scroll whenever you navigate to the top of the page. Like it shouldn't go back and then scroll up. It should just start at the top. So we'll save that. And there you go. Now you now have the scroll behavior. And this is where we get into like the thing that causes me a lot of stress, right? It is, um, if you, you notice that when you click on these links, it start, it starts from the top and then it scrolls down and that gets on my nerves. So we need to add a click handler. We'll say const handle, click, not plus, e with a K, equals anonymous function that takes in an event, uh, which will be of type react dot mouse event. So this is when you click on a um, an anchor element, so HTML anchor element, okay? And um, we wanna prevent the default behavior. I don't know what the second is doing over here. We need to defend, prevent the default behavior. So event dot prevent default, run that. And then we're gonna um, append uh, the ID, this ID to the history. So that way when we navigate back and forth, it remembers that this was in the history. And we're gonna say um, push state. So you probably recognize this if you paid attention during the, um, the me pretending to recreate um, React Router DOM. Um, but this time, yeah, 
I figured that was in my clipboard. I actually need this. So I'm gonna paste that there. So it's gonna add the hash um, to the state. Um, I'm trying to find, oh, wrong one. Sausage fingers, bro. I don't know what to tell you. Okay, so there we go. What am I missing? What am I actually missing? Hmm. Um, a little confused. I am very, oh gosh, I am very, oh my God, I have these flipped. <laughs> gosh. Ah, uh, okay. <coughs> Excuse me. All right. So, um, now that that uh, trauma session is over, I have an error. What? Why do I, what is happening right now? Oh, God, I forgot to, dude, I'm just not having a good day right now. Um, history dot push state. Oh my God, I added an extra bracket. Oh, I thought this error, okay, I have my prettier setup because I don't like spaces and tabs. You can only have one or the other. And I thought that error was because I was missing a brace. Sorry, that was confusing. There we go. Um, so now that we have the handle, the click handler, let's actually add that to the link. So we'll say link on click equals handle click. And now when we click on these, it won't do that annoying thing of scrolling us to the top of the page every time we click on it, but it's also not working. And there is a reason it's not working. The reason it's not working is because we're not passing in the scroll to element function here. So let's go ahead and paste that there. So it was working on the history change, but it's not working when we actually click. So now, now, if I click on it, it'll navigate there and it won't do that annoying thing where it snaps it to the top. Now, to get rid of this, I had originally thought if I listen like a good little boy and I say scroll to element, that it'll work. But you'll see this nasty little error here that says the scroll to element makes the dependencies of use effect at line 59 change on every render. And that scares the crap out of me. So uh, wrap the definition of scroll to element in its own use callback hook. I don't want to do that right now just because I haven't tested that, but that may be a solution. But there is another solution. It is a disgusting solution. And that is to do the hacky thing of just redefining scroll to element inside the use effect and the error goes away. And then we can live happily ever after. So um, that was a lazy little ending, but that's more or less like what we were trying to do. Now, we are missing one thing, which is the ID from the section. So I'm gonna quickly speed run us through the addition of those. And that's because we don't want the ID to just be this. But if you don't feel like doing this, what we can do is we can make the ID optional. And then in the ID field that goes into the title, what we can say is, if ID, then it'll return the ID. If the ID doesn't exist, we'll put an or, or, so or title. So it'll use the title if we only have the title, which means the title is required. The title is required. So this will use the title as the ID if the ID is not provided, but we want to use the ID. So this is just to get rid of the, uh, the type error, but for completion's sake, let's go ahead and add in those IDs. I am going to copy paste them from my other uh, monitor. So just be aware of that. Um, so let's see, in our button uh, component, our first section, button primary, we're gonna add that ID there. In our second section, which I'm looking for right now, there it is. We're gonna add button secondary. And in our third section, we're gonna add button tertiary. And then in our fourth section, which does exist, we're gonna add button destructive. And now when I click these, you'll see button primary, uh, button secondary, button tertiary, and button destructive. So now let's add the ones for card. Um, so for card, we have um, card, nope, that's the wrong one. It's supposed to be header footer over here. And I think for this one, it was um, card simple. And then for this one, it was card 
block length. And um, I have one more for input. So under input, I'm just gonna copy the first one because it's the easiest one. Um, right there, whoa, hello, sorry. Input basic. The second one is gonna be input label. And the third one is gonna be uh, right there. Input description. So now we go back to our card and just check these. So we have input, uh, we have card simple, card header footer, card block link, and input. So we have input basic, input label, input description. And that concludes our uh, tutorial. So that's it for the routing. I will be um, probably adding to this series. I'm just gonna like most likely be adding like more components. Um, I, I, I did promise, or I didn't promise, but um, I did hint towards the addition of, um, where's my, <laughs> where's my other browser? Okay. Um, hmm. Oh, there it is. Okay. So I did reference this preview component over here, which is really, really, really nifty. Like it took me a long time to figure this out, but when I figured it out, I was so excited. Um, so I was thinking about making this um, its own little video, like explaining the, um, the preview bit, because I think that is worth its own explanation. Um, so I'll probably go through that. And as a sneak peek, uh, these aren't official yet, but I've been messing around with um, adding an accordion. So it looks like that. Um, and then there's, uh, I did today uh, finish the drop down. So this kind of component where, you know, have these nice, nice little actions and so forth and so on. That's what their, you know, this is what their code looks like. So I'm thinking about um, going through and actually um, adding these in their own individual videos. So, uh, but yeah, that's probably something to look forward to. But uh, as for the actual um, content of the tutorial, I think this pretty much wraps up these um, three main concepts we created a um, we created a few components added the documentation created a bunch of different like components to render the documentation render excuse me we added light mode and dark mode we added routing and um, hopefully we had a good time so if you like this um, I yeah do the thing and um, I hope you learned something today